Alrighty, mealtime, welcome to a little summary of the um, new play series that I did. Uh, so I basically played the big three space games that we have at the moment, the Dangerous, Star Citizen and No Man's Sky. And I also had a look at X4 and I wanted to see like how well the interface is designed, how intuitive it is, how accessible everything is. And um, overall, I have to say my experience was really very positive um, with the how in terms of how um, well these games manage their their complexity. But I of course did not only look at the interface. I also wanted to have a um, yeah look at the game itself, of course, and how much fun it is, what you can do, how you can progress, and so forth. And in that um, process, I found. I had two surprises, one uh, positive and one negative. And um, I want to start with the negative. And uh, that's No Man's Sky. Um, I understand it's a pretty beloved game as far as I know. But uh, for me personally, it was pure agony. Um, it's a survival game first and a space game third. I don't really like survival games. The only one that I like was Subnautica. and. And that I didn't really progress anywhere. I just enjoyed the underwater world and diving through that uh, a beautiful um, world that they designed. And, um, and No Man's Sky was just a constant running around, mining minerals, walking through that place, mining minerals again, manage your inventory. Um, it's not really helped by this confusing interface, which is like a looks like a periodic system of elements with a whole bunch of chemical symbols um, so if you enjoyed um, chemistry class then that's probably for you again you run around you mine minerals then you refine minerals so you can craft stuff that you can mine different minerals with to build different yeah like stuff that helps you um, refine different minerals to build different stuff and you get the idea even if you finally get into space it's like more of the same you have to mine minerals, you do that by shooting asteroids, or you have to travel to other planets to mine minerals there to recharge the systems of your spaceship so you can launch and you can land. And in order to, again, visit other places where you can mine minerals, it's it's a pretty boring game loop. It was the only space game here where there was no system map. You can utilize the space map to fly to other systems, but then you basically you have to look around and then find the planet and then go there and then scan it and then you know it's there, but it's not really clear if you can find it again. I, I don't really know how to um, describe that. Again, every other game here had a system map, an in-system map, a space map, a star map. Uh, every other game also uh, made use of the mouse cursor in that map so that you can select systems, select stations, select planets that you want to go to. The stations are tiny. They are all, I, I, don't, I think they all probably look the same from inside. I've seen videos where someone landed in the station that looked basically the, the exact same, or had the exact same interior at the station that I was landing at. It's pretty small. Um, there are people there. I like the fact that you can learn or you have to learn their language. That's an aspect of the game that I actually liked. You have to learn words first and they show you and then you can communicate. That, that's cool. I like that. That gets, has some probably some Star Trek vibes or whatever. But then again, these people just run around the station. They're bouncing off walls and then they turn back and that, that's, that, that then ex takes you out of the, the immersion. So another thing that I don't like about No Man's Sky is that it forces you into their game progression path. It's pretty tight. You have to do exactly what they want in the order you want. There's a point where they kind of let you lose after you repair your spaceship. You can kind of start and then go freely in the system, but you cannot get a hyperdrive. And they don't tell you that you cannot get a hyperdrive until you build a base. That's not really logically sound. I usually you just buy a hyperdrive, like even in 1993's Privateer, you can, if you didn't have a hyperdrive, I think in the beginning you did not have a hyperdrive, you can just buy one and then you can go to other places. That's, that's 
pretty standard in the dangerous you have your frame shift drive and in, in star citizen you have your quantum drives and it's not that you have to do that you have to build a completely different thing in order to get your hyperdrive so that logic wasn't really getting to me so i was like looking around and googling trying to find out how to get a hyperdrive and then at some point i found out that i have to build the base first um, so so the, the game progression is pretty forced, but still in a way they force you pretty confusing. So it's really remarkable how they managed to do both things at the same time. And um, the background story is somewhat in interesting. You kind of wake up somewhere, you don't know who you are, where you are, what is the point of you being there. Your ship is there, but you don't know how you get got there. Uh, it's pretty interesting, I say, or it was pretty pretty interesting to me but it's told to you in plain text. So you have to read the entire time. Uh, yeah, I don't know, that's um, that's another thing that I think is a kind of a missed opportunity. So all in all, I stopped playing No Man's Sky pretty early after four hours already when I had to build a wooden shack. And I didn't feel like I was playing a space game anymore at that point. And it was pretty boring and pretty exhausting to me to play that. If you want to play a survival game, then that's probably for you. You can survive on different planets and then travel with the spaceship to these different planets that you can survive on. So maybe that floats your boat. No idea. To me, it was it was pretty bad. Uh, one positive thing that I have to say was that there were pretty a couple of pretty stunning moments. That's, that's an amazing moment that gives me chills. That, that was really great. But overall, um, definitely not a recommendation from my side. Okay, proceeding on to the next game, which is Star Citizen. Now, Star Citizen is kind of a special case. I think it's a little bit out of the uh, out of competition here because it's still an alpha, but it's an alpha for, I don't know, half a decade now. So um, I have to yeah, apply the same standards here as to the other games despite the fact that it only has one system that you can play in it's i think the most impressive one at least in the uh, in the amount of like jaw dropping moments that you have if you like you get out of your apartment and you go to a window and you see this giant city and then it's just an absolute jaw dropping moment you can explore this entire city it's full of uh, shops and bars and markets and it's, it's really amazing. Um, you can also then uh, start with your spaceship if you figure out how to do that. Um, and then fly over the city or fly through these cities. And some of these cities, they are as big as the entire planet. That was very, very impressive. Also pretty impressed on how well Star Citizen managed its complexity. Like you can go on foot, you can you wake up in a in, in, in your apartment, you have to use trains, you sometimes have to use a network of trains. You um you have to control your spaceship, which is pretty close to like a more complex simulator. And uh, you have to use this uh, of course the system map to plot routes and courses, but that's all pretty pretty intuitive. Once you find out, once you figured out that the F key that you have to hold the F key down. And then you can use your mouse cursor to interact with like people and, and, and lifts and, and buttons and screens and stuff. It's actually pretty intuitive. Again, you use the same interface for your space map, for, for managing your inventory, for plotting a route. You can then activate your quantum drive, which also acts as a, a autopilot, um, at least in getting you close to your destination. And it worked actually pretty well. I was pretty surprised on how, how easy that was. I also liked uh, one aspect of the game, and this is how brutal it is in parts. Like, oh, you don't pay attention for a moment, you crash into a mountain. 
you take a wrong turn. Oh, this is a restricted area. Let's have a look in your gun down and then you wake up in a hospital 40 million kilometers away. And I like that. I like that this, this game punishes you so harshly because you really have to pay attention. You cannot let things slide. But then it doesn't really continue its in a consequent way. So you then go back to your terminal and you get your ship back immediately. But I think this is an alpha thing. I think with the with the release game, this would, this is going to change. Um, of course, there are also negatives about this. I talked a lot about positive things, but there are also negatives. Um, it's a little bit like in No Man's Sky. There's a lot of walking around. You have to walk from your apartment to the train station. You have to walk from your hospital to the spaceport. You have to walk through your spaceport. You have to walk to to the hangar and, and through your spaceship. And then you have to walk from, from your landing position to where you pick up your cargo. And then you have to carry the cargo and walk back to your ship. And that's actually walking. You cannot run with while you're carrying your package. And it's just, it's, it's, it almost becomes a walking simulator in space. And I, it, there's so much walking. I, I don't know. I haven't really checked the footage, but I, it felt to me that I did a whole lot more walking than flying in space. Also, another thing that is very weird to me is um, that they pay attention to detail to a very excessive amount. Like every location, basically every major location looks different. The bar looks different. The, 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 the ground floors look different. The, 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 the wall panels look different. Everything feels, everything in this world feels very handcrafted. Like someone actually did the work and put in the effort. And that's really great. But then you have this crazy detail and there's really nothing beneath it. And for example, there are, there are a whole lot of people in, in, in the city, but they're all just staring in front of them. They're all just, you can interact with some of them, but the dialogue options are basically always the same. And the moment you exit the dialogue option, they kind of go back into their catatonic state and then just stare in front of them. And I remember really a year, years back, there was a demo or a something that they showed on the, on a citizen con or something like that, where, um, they landed with the ship at the port and there were people coming or two guys coming. There were other people that were standing around talking to each other. And then they walked around in a corridor and there was a shop and there was a shop owner that was complaining or he was like something wasn't working. Come on. No. Hey, welcome to Dumper's Depot. Take a look around. Everything's for sale. And that world felt so much more alive. And in the current version, it's just, they just stare in front of them. And that was, that was pretty confusing to me. Like they put so much effort in building such a detailed world, but then it seems so, so, so dead because all the people are just zombies. It's the same with, with, with all the, the, the outer worlds where I was, where I had to pick up the packages. There was just no one there. The site was, Beautiful. You just walk into that building, and there was just magazines lying around, and cups standing, and but there was no one there. Everything was empty, and then there was absolutely no space traffic. Like in my five to six hours in Star Citizen, I saw one other spaceship, one, and I think that was another player. So there are no NPC ships, as far as I can tell. So I don't, I don't know that that meant, that doesn't really make the world come to life, in my opinion. I was very confusing. Another thing that I did not like very much was the flight model. Um, it felt very much like flying a ship on a rubber band. It, it's possible that it is very realistic like that, but I don't really give that much crap about realism in a flight model, at least not in a space combat game or in a space sim. I'd rather have a better gameplay and more and a more fun flight model than a realistic one. In a flight simulator, that's a different uh, thing. But in a game where the um, focus is on uh, combat and doing missions and progressing and and trading on all that, I don't need a very realistic flight model. I prefer one that is fun. But as for gameplay progression as such, I heard a lot of people saying that there isn't any, but that's not true. You can do missions, you can... Um, 
you can transport cargo, you can uh, transport packages, um, you can probably do other stuff. I didn't really get too much into it, but uh, I heard from other people that there's mining. Again, mining is not my kind of thing. Um, it's it's the thing that I don't do in space games. I hate mining. I don't do that. Um, but it's there if you like it. You can you can do it in that and so so there's stuff to do. Mm, but this being an alpha, there's of course also um, a lot of bugs, a lot of glitches. Um, it's it's really a problem, I think. Um, so as for a recommendation, it starts out at about 50 bucks. And for an alpha that has only one system and is still riddled with glitches and bugs, I cannot recommend that. It's pretty cool. I remember I picked my starter package up for like 19, but that was like, I don't know, a decade ago or maybe, I don't know, seven, eight years. I, I don't really remember. Um, that would have probably been fine to say like, okay, for less than 20, I give it a shot. I, I can take a look at it. You can play with your friends. You can do missions together. That can be fun, um, but 50 bucks is a, or 50 quid or 50 euro, that's like a full price title. And, and that's, that to me is, is, is too much for a glitch riddle alpha that only has one system. So there's that. So the next game on the list is the, uh, believe it or not, second oldest, and that's Elite. Dangolf. Being released in, I think, December 2014, um, but Star Citizen um, is older, actually. As fully dangerous, this game does one thing right, and that is flying spaceships. It has the best flight model, the most fun combat, and um, the sensation of space flight is, is the best, in my opinion, in all of these games. You really feel like you're in a spaceship, and that you're flying through space, um, especially, and that's the thing that other games, except for, I think, No Man's Sky, do not support, that's the VR. I think uh, Elite Dangerous is, is in a whole new level in VR. If you want a game that's just about spaceships, then, and flying spaceships, a space sim, a pure space sim, then that's the, um, that's the best, in my opinion. There are very little restrictions. They give you everything that you need right away. You have to, of course, progress in the game to get better and get better parts. But it's it, it's not really puzzling. Uh, you add a station, you go into the station menu, there's a mission board, you can do a mission. That's that's pretty easy. That's pretty f straightforward. There's a uh, commodities market. You go there, you can trade. You click on a the commodity, they tell you where it's exported to and if they buy it, where it's imported from. So you can immediately plan routes, where to buy and get goods. You can immediately start doing missions. It's pretty easy to comprehend, in my opinion. You can do a tutorial at the beginning and you should if you're new to the game. They explain everything pretty well. The thing is that, that it's getting pretty repetitive pretty quickly, though. It's like, okay, you transporting this passenger to that station. Okay, you're transporting this cargo to that station. You're transporting this um, data to that station. Um, but you can always mix it up with combat. The combat is great. You can like go in a conflict zone, go into an asteroid field or into a, 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 a ring of a planet and then uh, do combat. You can um, do it with your friends. You can hire pilots who fly smaller fighter ships. If you have bigger ships that can have fighter bay or a hangar bay. This is a lot of fun. You can also have big carrier ships. These are huge capital ships, but um, getting there uh, will take take quite a, quite a while. However, there are things to consider. A, it's pretty old, so it's not the prettiest. It's it looks better than uh, No Man's Sky for sure, but um, it's not the prettiest game. Um, and uh, I think for, I don't know what they want to have, 25 bucks at the moment. I've seen Steam keys for five. I don't know if that's genuine, but I would recommend to like pick up the base game, maybe at a sale, because there's another issue with it. And that is that I strongly believe that Frontier development is not putting a lot of effort in, in, in developing the game anymore. They pulled out completely of all the consoles. They, they announced that they don't support a console any further. Of course, I think you can still play the, the base game at the console, but they don't do new upgrades or updates on, on consoles. And uh, I think the recent story update is basically 
not a sign that they're going to invest a lot of the in, into that game, but it's basically a sign that they are pretty much done with it. Giving you a story told in text and one cinematic sequence isn't really a lot of content for like, I don't know, a year or six months or whatever. It's a little bit sad because it's not impossible to maintain games over a very long stretch of time. For example, a game that came out or that was released before any Dangerous um, Warframe is still being supported, is still being managed, they're still adding um, f story quests, they're still adding new frames, they're still adding new weapons, they're still adding new mods, they're still adding new gameplay mechanics. It's a little bit sad, but um, I feel they given they given up on this game. They they I don't think that they will develop this any further. As for the Odyssey add-on, which is the actual thing that I played in the series, I really, really, really like that. I don't like the first person shooter rubbish that is I don't know why why that is in the space sim. I think they did it because like Star Citizen did it with the guns and the stuff and, and, and I think No Man's Sky. But it's it's if you want a first person shooter there there's a large collection of games out there that are better. But what I like is exactly the thing that I complained about earlier in, in Star Citizen and that is the atmosphere. People there are talking to each other, they are complaining or they, they, they talk about what their current work is and, and how hard it is and I've been great. Saw this place and thought, yeah, that seems habitable. Idiots. What were command thinking? It's too cold to do anything. Uh huh. I don't disagree. The constant shift changes have ruined my sleep schedule. They say what their plans are for the future, or they talk to each other. They. You've got to admit, there's something appealing about the idea of being an explorer. Uh, I've thought about it, but. I don't really think it's my kind of thing. You can take on missions in the bar. This, this is such a classic space game thing to, to go in a bar and then take on a mission. They play soft jazz music or old country music or whatever in, in these bars. Always a different music. That's, it's a pretty neat atmosphere. and. and that adds that adds so much. In the end, that's basically all that uh, the community, I think, originally wanted from the Odyssey. They wanted to have, or it was usually it was, or originally, I think it was called Space Legs. It was just walk around in the station, walk around in your ships, but these running around these bases, shutting down a reactor, stealing data, shooting down some scientists that run around there. I don't know, but that's not good. I mean, I mean you have that first person thingy now you have that that you're on foot i mean you can do so much with it and that's something that star citizen on the other end did better and that's like um i think you can um in star citizen you can like um do missions where you can where somebody tells you hey there's a derelict ship please go there and and see if there's anything valuable in it or they say look we are, we have we sent a freighter uh, to to that station and it didn't get there can you check it's here it's this flight path can you check if it's kind of gone dark in the middle of it and, and or on the slide pass somewhere and then you find it like drifting in space and then you get into it and then you get clues on what happens you find bodies you, you read logs and then you find out that there's a pirate attack that happened and then they stole valuable goods or valuable data from that ship and you can get it back but then you have to like assemble a team or go in guns blazing alone and then or sneak in even and and get the data back that would be these little side quests, that would be uh, a very, very good thing that they could have done. But yeah, flying or, or going through derelict spaceships would again mean that they had to have ship ship interiors. And uh, so I think they they um, they missed out on a lot of opportunities there. So overall, base really dangerous. Yes, in a, on a sail, or if you just want to fly spaceships, then that's okay. Odyssey. It, to me, yes, it was worth it because I liked that that atmospheric upgrade in with the bars and the stations and all that. But I cannot imagine that this is for the most people. So I'd say no. What you say, not base elite. Yes, that's where I stand with that. No skin off my nose. And last but not least, um, the biggest surprise here for me, and that is X4 Foundations. Um, I have no idea how I could have 
um, ignored that game for so long. I think it was released in 2018 or something, and I never touched it before. The interface as such is very clunky and very text heavy. I didn't really like it that much. A classic, a classic thing was when you go into your ship information and I don't see my ship. I like when I click on ship information, I need to see, okay, this is my ship. And in, instead I got a map and with some text on the left side. So Aerosoft really, really needs to hire some UI designers, some UX researchers. That being said, it is very manageable though. I did, I did pretty well in managing everything there. So I didn't really um, get, got lost too much. As for the entire, like which, with all of these space games now, every single one of them that, I'm, that I had here, is that you cannot just fly a spaceship, but you can also get up from your seat and then walk around. And I think this entire aspect of first person, X4 um, did it the best way, in my opinion, because they completely ignored the entire first person shooter part. I don't, I don't need that in a space game, but you can walk around on, in these stations. You can get up from your seat. You can walk through your spaceship. You can walk through these stations, around in these stations. You get the scale of, the station, of these stations, which is huge. But you can also shortcut with these transporter rooms. So they're basically the um, the elevators from, from Star Citizen, but they can get you anywhere, not just up and down. And I think it's a pretty clever way that you can walk around in these stations. You can use these escalators and you can walk around, but you don't have to. You can use these transporter rooms and then you can shortcut everything. And I like that a lot. That being said, um, I think these station interiors need more variants. They basically look mostly the same um, if I'm at a Teladi station, I want to see that I'm at a Teladi station and I want it to be different from an Argon station. I want it to be different from a Perenid station or from a Split station. Um, they need to put a little bit more um, handwork into that, like Star Citizen. What Star Citizen did too much, they did a little bit too little here. A, li a little bit too little. Yeah, a little bit too little. So they need to put um, more work into um, making unique places, in my opinion. I like the fact that one of these stations had an aquarium. That was great. It's also the only game here that is not multiplayer. And X games are usually very dry. They're very complex. They focus a lot on these economic simulations, on these economic gameplay. So weirdly enough, despite all that, I had the most fun of all these games in X4. A huge part of that is, of course, that I had a very adventurous trip. Um, I was flying through a space anomaly, was contacted after being contacted by a Boron who was, I think, held captive or something like that. And uh, I had to fight a, an enemy in an asteroid field and I was stranded on a freighter, which I saw a brick in, in, in the bridge. And then I had to fly, I had to spacewalk basically back to the station. And I was walking on this huge S shipyard which is so impressive i mean it was just five to six hours but still that counts for something i've counted it i found it somewhere and i think overall there are over 200 different ships here uh, all the variants considered that's i think as much as almost as much as in star citizen that's that's really really a lot uh, you can of course have really huge ships you have you have to have a crew you can man them you can hire people who fly ships for you um yeah, so I'm really looking forward to continue playing this. And again, you have to keep in mind that this is the only game where you can actually own multiple ships which can operate at the same time by an NPC crew. You can have own fleets, even raid sectors, clear them out of enemies. Um, you can have carriers, destroyers, you can build own stations, you can even build stations for yourself or stations that do nothing more than um, building warships for you or whatever so there's there's a really there's a lot to find out there's a lot to get to so um isn't really a game for someone who just want to fly some spaceships it's definitely a little bit more complex but you can also do that you can just fly spaceships do missions that's what i did i did i, did, I think i did three missions in my five to six hours that's more than any other game and you can do that one, one was um, the one with the Boron, one I had to scan a station, and one I... What was the last one? Oh, yeah, right, I had to I had to bring some dudes, some stuff, and that's it. So, yeah, the graphics aren't really state-of-the-art. I get that they look a little bit outdated, but then again, the scale of it is still pretty impressive. If you stand in these huge stations and you see these huge ships flying through, that's still pretty impressive. It isn't cheap. 
So it's, yeah, it's, it's including all the add-ons is the most expensive one here, but I'm going to find out if it's worth it. I bought all the add-ons and I'm going to uh, continue exploring this game and um, so that I can find out and then give you maybe some more uh, clarity on that. But um, at the moment, I have to say that I like this game, again, from all of these the most. I would recommend it if, you got, if you're not getting scared by this rather complex interface. Yeah, was my biggest surprise here was my, um, yeah, the game that I had the most fun with. And it's the one that I'm going to uh, continue playing along with, uh, of course, uh, Elite Dangerous Odyssey, where I'm going on a quest to find uh, and visit every space bar in the galaxy. But that's a different story for now. I say, um, choose another. Successfully docked.